Hello, welcome back. Welcome to AutomationTalks.com, and uh, I'm here today with again one of the question, which is uh, a Java pure object-oriented programming language. Okay, so many people say, okay, Java is not hundred percent object-oriented programming because of some reasons. Okay, so let's talk about that. Is really Java is not hundred percent object-oriented programming language. Okay, now before that, let us try and understand. So we might be aware about what is object oriented programming basically it, it follows certain principles and because of those principles we call it as object oriented programming we'll see what those principles are okay so out of that when we say object oriented programming so in that the main thing comes uh, in picture is objects okay so now what is object so object is basically um, it is something which is having a state and behavior right so when we say state that means uh, in in practically speaking when we say state state could be your kind of variables and when we say behavior so behavior practically we can call it as a methods we have different methods right so what we do is basically uh, in object oriented programming we group all these things okay into something called as class right so in class we can have a uh, state plus its behavior okay so we can combine both the things uh, which objects hold basically right and uh, we, we can combine it in a class right so that that is what basically the class uh, the object is basically and we can store it into a class fine uh, we must be aware about that uh, now the question is is uh, java is 100% object oriented programming okay so why people say okay it, it is not 100% programming language so i'll tell you the three reason why people say it is uh, not pure uh, object oriented programming language okay so uh, the very first reason is uh, okay so purely object oriented means it should not contain uh, or it should contain only classes and objects right so that's what purely object oriented programming means but in java we have something called as primitive data types so primitive data types that means when we uh, when we declare int or uh, when we uh, declare double or float right so all 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 these things are your there are many more okay so all they are your primitive data type so and this primitive data type doesn't uh, uh, we we cannot call them basically as a objects right they are primitive they are not the objects and that's why uh, we call it as a uh, it is not object oriented programming because it supports primitive data types that's the first thing we see and the second second reason what i came across is in pure object oriented programming language we should access everything by uh, message passing that is through objects right so access through objects so that, that that's what that's what we should do in purely object oriented programming language okay but java contains static variable and static method static variable and static methods which can be accessed directly without using objects right so if i want to use any static method how i can do is i can i can directly use method let us say my method name is m1 so i can directly use my method as m1 like this right i need not to create object of my class to access particular method i can access this directly that's what the importance of static is right but it is not satisfying my objective right what what is the objective of object oriented programming everything should be accessed through objects by passing the message right everything should be accessed through message but if uh, we try to access static variables or static method then there is no need of objects basically right uh, that's the second thing okay what the third so the third thing uh, third thing i came across is java uh, does not support basically multiple inheritance due to the, the diamond problem okay so everyone is aware about diamond problem what it is right so this means uh, an important feature of object oriented design is lacking 
okay then how how it how it is object oriented programming so basically these are the three things uh which i found uh, why people say okay it is not 100 percent uh, object oriented programming first one is everywhere it is mentioned it is primitive data type uh, it, it basically supports primitive data type so it is not 100 uh, percent object oriented programming because they have nothing to do with objects so when i say primitive that means i can simply declare int i is equal to zero or one whatever it is okay i can directly declare like this so there is there is nothing like uh, using objects into this particular sentence or a declaration right so if i need to use objects then what it means is like I, if i can use something like int a is equal to new int and in bracket i will give one something like that then this could be my uh, object i have created object of integer and this will hold value two. so so this this could be uh, if if java supports this one that means okay this is object oriented programming but for simplicity they have introduced this way as well primitive data type this is just to make java simpler fine now okay so these are the three reasons basically second one is access through objects uh, since uh, it supports static variables and static methods for which we do not need objects to access them and third one is because of diamond problem it doesn't support multiple inheritance fine these are the three problems now let us see uh, even we have these problem there there are some uh, basically the uh, what i can say uh, if, if if we if we read java in depth there are few things which can prove that okay even we have these many problems but java is purely object oriented programming okay and what it is the first one is even if java has a primitive data type these types are used inside the class right so when we create a class like wh whatever declaration i'll be doing here whatever declaration i am doing int i is equal to one so this declaration is not outside of the class right so i need to use something like class uh, whatever my class name is a and then within the class only i need to do the declaration like here i can do int i is equal to one it would be within the class and it would be never outside outside of the class like how we do in c plus plus right so even if you see the api specification of class okay the specification clearly says that all uh, the arrays and the primitive data types like your billion bytes character short int long whatever we have uh, even your void or keywords uh, should be re uh, represented as objects of the class right so basically uh, all these things we define into the class and if i want to access this outside of the class i definitely need to create object of this class and then only i can access them so this is the first thing apart from this there are wrapper classes as well right so if i need if i need to declare integer i can use something like this integer a is equal to new integer and here i can give the value of integer now this is the way how we can define how we can uh, ba basically create a uh, let us say integer uh, using object oriented technology right so this is a wrapper class but this is a primitive class which makes java simpler if every time if i need to declare something like this it looks little complex to me than using this one right but if since this particular wrapper class is supported by java i can say okay this particular drawback primitive data types can be neglected right because i have solution to that and this is not the reason for java is not being 100% object oriented programming as well everything is into the class nothing is outside of the class that means if i want to access something i need to create the object of class and i would say okay that is object oriented okay the second thing what i have said uh, not what i have said what i found is because of static variables and static methods we cannot say it is 100 percent object or pure object oriented programming okay but even static variables and static methods are written within the uh, class itself right so uh, if i want to write any static method or a static variable i will be creating a class and then i will be creating my static method over here public static method m1 and then uh, i'll be creating method over here right uh, if i want to access this particular method within the class there is no need to create the object but 
if i want to create uh, if i want to use this method outside of this particular class a then how i will be accessing it i will be accessing it by taking the reference of class a that is uh, whatever object i will create for class a dot m1 right so this is how i will be accessing it right so even the static variable and static methods are written inside the class when accessing them from outside we use the class name that's what we have seen here it means they are the part of my class definition right i have written them inside the class and why why we use this uh, static basically it is for reducing the memory utilization only one copy of the class is gets created uh, through the object that's why we use static but since it is within the class and to access it i will be using the object of the class i cannot say okay it is not 100% programming because of this reason because even to access static methods and static variable outside the class i need the object of the class fine so second point is fine now the third point uh because of the diamond problem multiple inheritance is not supported fine so any programming language any uh, basically any purely object oriented programming language should support uh, the five fi five features basically of object oriented programming right so the first one is basically your classes and methods second one is uh, encapsulation encapsulation and uh, my third one would be abstraction my fourth would be inheritance and fifth would be polymorphism so 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 these are the uh, five things which uh, if my programming language supports i can say it is a uh, object oriented programming right classes and methods are supported encapsulation supported abstraction supported polymorphism is supported only in case of inheritance uh, one of the case of inheritance is not supported which is my multiple inheritance right so remember java contain all these features whatever five features i have mentioned over here and hence it is purely object oriented programming language not not just because the java does not contain multiple inheritance we should not say it is not purely uh, object oriented programming language multiple inheritance you know it, it is just one of the uh, part of inheritance it is not the main feature of object oriented programming it is just one of the sub component of this uh, inheritance right it is uh, if if there is something like okay inheritance is not supported then we can say okay if it is not uh, it is not 100% object oriented programming but it is one of the component of inheritance is not supported and even we can achieve that uh, using interfaces okay so if i uh, if i understand this correctly all the things whatever i have said earlier okay because of these reasons uh, i will say okay java is not 100% or purely object oriented programming but after seeing all those things over here uh, the solutions i can say because of few reasons like okay inheritance multiple inheritance is not supported Th this is very minor thing right uh, so and that could, that could be achieved uh, even for in uh, for primitive data type we have the alternative and in fact the main point here is everything we are declaring within the class so to access them we will be creating the objects so based on what i talked till now i could say uh, okay java is purely object oriented programming okay so that's what i wanted to explain today uh, your views are always welcome you can uh, put your views into the comment section what do you think java is object oriented purely basically purely object oriented programming language or not okay so thank you